Hello, everybody. <laughs> welcome, welcome to You're another back. magnificent okay. Monday. Woo, 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 woo. We are so excited to have you. If you don't know, this is Beyond the Book, where we go beyond the pages and get a deeper revelation. <laughs> We are so excited to be here with you guys. If you would like to support us, you can um, go to the KT uh, Beyond the Book YouTube page and subscribe so that you will know when we are on. Also, you can do that same thing at Denitra Brown or at the KT. Um, mm -mm, KT Group. It was not coming out. KTB's uh, group on Facebook. Um, you can subscribe to that and be able to see us live as well. So we would love for you to stay connected with us. If you would like to support us, um, if you are getting you know, some good revelation and you just want to help us grow, we are trying to grow and expand so that we can um, touch the nation. And so if you would like to support us, you can support us there at Kingdom Think. Um, we are always accepting prayer requests requests. So if you are in this, you know, we are, we are going through, we're learning new things. And I know sometimes it's not that easy. So come on over to bthosts at gmail.com, put in your prayer requests and definitely, most definitely share your testimonies. God is doing some wonderful things. We know that 2022 is going to be explosive. And so we want to help to Keep that ignition going by putting those testimonies out so that we can all join together and celebrate each other as we go deeper into our revelation of Christ and his way of life. So without further ado, we're going to get right on into it. And what do we do? We go straight to our kingdom key, baby. Yes, we do. <laughs> Takia, yes, what you got for us today? We're going straight to the word. Yeah, we got to keep on making it explosive on building on it keep on building on it so today we're gonna go to joel um 25 and 26 okay here we go and i will you the years that the locust has eaten the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm my great army which i have sent among you and ye shall eat in plenty and it shall be satisfied and praise the name of your lord god which has dealt wondrously with you and my people shall never go ashamed. I love this scripture. Okay, let's dig into this, all right? I was like, God, why is it the locust? It goes through all of them, right? So it's the, the locust, the canker worm, the palmer worm, and the caterpillar. I was like, what's the significance of that? It's a complete cycle of destruction. That's what all of those represents, different stages of destruction. And by the time you come to the final one, um, which is the caterpillar, you have a complete cycle of destruction. So what God is saying is that even in situations, if we have complete destruction in our lives, that we would have the cause, right? Because the people wouldn't repent and they did not, um, they wanted, they sinned and, you know, go read the story. In our own choices, we can cause destruction, right? And God said, I'll restore all of it, all of it. So even in your life, if you've had complete destruction, okay, so let's talk about this. Let's go to some extremes because complete destruction is extreme. So let's say we were strung out on drugs. Mm -hmm. Well, we say that's complete destruction. Yeah. It's, it, we started off smoking weed or whatever we were, and then it led to, led to something else. And by the time we knew it, we were strung out on drugs, right? And a lot of people may have counted you out, right? But God didn't. He said, because when you repent and come back to me, I'll restore the years. So he does the work. He restores the time. He replaces everything that you thought you lost, right? Even when it comes to relationships, we just had Mother's Day. Sometimes we have relationships with our moms, right, that weren't the best for whatever reasons. Let's just make it real honest. But God said, I'll restore the years, even with that, right? And I'll use my personal testimony. Uh, growing up, me and my mom, we didn't have a real close, tight-knit relationship. But what, what has God done? He's restored the time. He's restored the time. So now in my 40, my 40, I'm 40-something. 40 what year is this? 22? I'll be 42. Okay, that's how I have to do it. 
I have the closest relationship with my mom that I now than I ever had growing up, right? God restored that time. Regardless as to why it was, she did her best. We know mothers, we do our best. And you know, I'm a kid. And if you know, my name's the kid. My mama had to deal with a whole bunch. <laughs> she had to deal with a whole bunch because I'm me. But God restored all of that, all of that. And so we have a really good relationship now. And then I even love how it continues on. And it says, and, um, and I don't know, people are like, you just put all your business out there. We transparent. And if you don't know that it's happening for us, how will you know it's going to happen for you? We overcome by the word of the, by the blood of the and the word of our testimony. Let's make it real. Right. You know, we're all about just the transparency. And then it is um, that God has dealt wondrously with us. So that means that through his love, he's going with us. That's how he restores the years. And it wasn't due my, through his wrath. It wasn't through anger. Right. It was through love. And then it says, and you shall never be ashamed. So oh, no matter what it is that you had to go through because of your, God said, I'm going to restore the years. And then at the end, you won't be ashamed. What? Who can do that? Who can take away the, sh the shame that comes with sin? Because there is shame that comes with sin. Who can take it away? Nobody but God. All you have to do is come on in and say, okay, Jesus, I'm here. Help me here. I repent here. Sometimes we don't even know what to repent for. So God even show me that. Show me that. Now, and then deal with me in love and watch him do it in everything. No matter what stage of destruction you're in, he's going to restore the years. That means that you, those relationships, that um, intimacy that you thought you lost, all of that, you'll gain it back in plenty. Because it's that you'll eat in plenty. Yes, you won't lack and you won't be ashamed. Come on. I'm excited. I love that scripture. Yes. Okay. We're going to go a little bit deeper. Here we go. <laughs> We're going beyond the letters on the page Coming to a deeper understanding We're revolutionary We're going beyond the book We're going beyond the book Yes, 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 y'all. We are back. We are so excited for those of you that just joined us. We are Beyond the Book, where we go beyond the pages and get a deeper revelation. Yes. Welcome, welcome, everyone that is joining us. We are so excited to have you. And uh, we're going to get all right into it. So y'all know we're all about being transparent and we're all about working this out to, to you know, together. And so um, if you have been following, and we apologize for last week. We're sorry. We really miss you guys. Um, but you know what? Like Jesus had us out in these streets. <laughs> So he had us do a little detour. We was doing something a little different. So, um, but we'll we'll talk to you guys about that later. But God is doing really great things. So just continue to keep us in your prayers um, as he is expanding our territory and putting us out in these streets to do his good work. So yes, we appreciate all your prayers. But um, if you guys have been following, you you know he's been using me as the example to bring forth the word. <laughs> and so um, he's doing the same thing today. We're good. So I'm going to go on into it. I'm going to do, um, tell you about something, just the same thing about restoring the canker worm. <sighs> so y'all yeah, know I'm transparent. So I pray for an opportunity for my not-for-profit and um, God gave it to me. And so I was like, yes, woo! so I got this opportunity and this is like a door to a big door, right? It's, this is, this is like standing on the porch to a big opportunity. And so being doing really good with this little opportunity was going to give me everything that I was looking for, you know, for the growth for my not-for-profit. And so when he, when the opportunity came and knock and I asked for it, it came, I was like, yes, thank you, God. Here's the opportunity. So this opportunity is like, we're doing this program and we're doing it, you know, for, it's, it's going to be really big. So I have to make this work. I have to make this 
perfect, right? Because if I make it perfect, then this is going to open this door and this door and this door. And so I had my plan. I put my plan together, got all my stuff together, and I wanted to have shirts <laughs> that all of us would wear so that we could be uniformed, right? And so, um, yeah, and it's so funny. I got one on. So here we go. So we're going to go our way into this story. <laughs> That's funny because that's not what I prepared to wear today. But anyway, so um, so I I have this plan. I we're all gonna make these shirts. My I went to go. Well, first I want to order the shirts. So I went to go order the shirts, and I had a horrible experience. It took me a whole month to get my money back. Right. So I was planning three months in advance for this this opportunity. I made the vision. I played it. Made it plain. Got getting all my ducks in a row. It took a whole month. He, it, it was, it did not work. I said, give me my money back. It took a whole month, y'all, for me to get my money back. So I got my money and I'm like, by this time, I don't have time <laughs> to order shirts. So I'm like, Lord, how am I going to do this? Oh my gosh. Cause we have to have these shirts. My idea of what needed to happen. So I was like, my mom has a shirt machine. I am going to go cause the key all packed up. So she can't help me out. So I'm like, my mama got this machine. I'm going to go and make these shirts myself. So I do everything. We go over there. Now, it takes a whole month. I go over there every, almost every Tuesday, <laughs> once a week, trying to go over there to get these shirts done. And something happens every time. So my plan, and I'm like, okay, so Lord, what's happening? I'm, I'm hitting a lot of adversity. Now I'm not, I'm not on goal with my plan. Canker worm is coming because now my time has been eaten up, right? <laughs> here come the canker worm. Let's get in, let's go in order. So here come, here come canker worm that came in, taking up my time. So I'm like, okay, that's all right. Well, first time it, it was, it was, it was the first guy. So we got the we got the canker worm taking up my time. I'm not able to, you know, um get this done. And I'm not moving forward because there's other stuff I need to be doing, but I've set my day to go and make these t-shirts every time I go something comes up silly stuff like the logo wouldn't work one time and the ink wouldn't come wasn't coming through the other time i mean silly stuff that don't even make sense the, the plug was missing like y'all silly stuff every time and so um finally i was like okay we get down to a week a week before my event now started three months three months before we are down to a week before and this is what my shirts look like. Yeah. Black. Just black shirts. And so I was fretting. I'm like, Lord, I I have to get this done. Like, I don't understand what's going on. I, I have to get this done. And so the day I had people coming, we were all gathering together to do all of our last minute preparation for the event. And Taki, I called Taki in the morning. And I said, I, I tried to prep everything last night. And guess what? I'm missing a piece. We did all of this and I'm still missing a piece. <laughs> so I go to the store to try to get the piece because everybody was coming and they were going to, I had plenty of hands that were going to help me to get everything done. And so I'm at the store and guess what y'all? My account is overdrawn. Why is my account overdrawn? I got money in the bank. What's happening? Car wouldn't work. I'm like, okay. Now I'm embarrassed because I don't use my card and they ain't working. I don't use two cards and they ain't working. I don't use three cards and none of my cards are working, right? Okay, here come that, here come that, uh, that palmer worm. Yep. Mm -hmm. So now I can't use none of my account. I'm like, what in the world is happening? So <laughs> the lady's like, well, try this and try that. And she's looking at me like, hold on, wait a minute. Are you, are these cards even yours? Like what's going on here? So I'm like, oh my gosh. So I go and get in the car and I call the key and I say, help me because I'm stressing out right now. I got you coming. She's coming to help me. <laughs> I like people going to be in my house in an hour to help me. And I don't even have the stuff and I'm stressing out. And she's like, okay, this is beyond the shirts. Let's figure out what God is trying to say. And so um, he's, she, he, she's talking and I'm like, I ain't got time for all of this because I need to get this shirt. <laughs> I got these people coming in 30 minutes in an hour so um she's like yeah god is talking about motives he's talking about your motives what wh what are you doing here 
And so we go back. And the day before we had kind of talked, had this kind of conversation about motives. And I'm I'm I done made up in my mind that my motivations are correct. <laughs> and they good to go. And God, you just need to bless my plan. So she says, What about your motives? What are you doing? What 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 is your why do you need these shirts? And I was like, well, because I want everything to look good because this is an opportunity that God gave me. And so it's my responsibility to make sure that I have all my T's crossed and my I's dotted so that this will produce the big opportunity that I pray for. So that was my perspective of how he wanted, of how things should go. And that was not his plan. So she's like, so how do you feel? So I'm I'm talking and, and everything sounds really great. I'm having this conversation. It sounds really good. And she's like, mm-hmm. So yeah. So what what if you if you go with black shirts? What if you end up with black shirts and all your people wear black shirts? That's stupid. We're not having that conversation even because that's stupid. That's not part of the plan. <laughs> now I done told God my plan and he need to bless it. That's what he gonna do. And she was like. Yeah, you just went clean off on me about these shirts being black. Like, <laughs> there's the heart issue right there. Let's let's deal with the issue. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, guys. So I had to sit and calm myself. And um, I was like, but I really want these shirts. And he was like, it's not about the shirts. It's about you trusting me because this is my thing. I gave you the prayer to even ask for this. So I gave you the desire. You prayed the prayer. I'm answering the prayer. Why would I answer your prayer and not carry it all the way out? So I'm like, you're right. But guess what I did? I went to the bank, figured out what was going on with my account <laughs> and got cash out and went and got the stuff because I was still going to make these shirts. Because <laughs> that's right. I understand. It's your way. It's your way. But I'm still going to make these shirts. So. Here comes that good old, what's the what's next? The other one, the, the caterpillar. I'm at the caterpillar stage now. Cause now that I ate up all my time, I'm I'm in I'm on 10 because my anxiety is all the way up to here. I have these people come to my home. We're preparing stuff, and I'm so up here that we don't even get all the stuff done that was supposed to be done because I can't tell them what to do. Cause I'm in my head. I said, you know what? Don't worry about it. I'll fix it. I'll do it. I'll do it. So they do what they, you know, they do what they're going to do. I go to bed that night and I'm like, you know what? I can wake up in the morning because we still didn't get to get the shirts done, y'all. Shirts did not get done that day. Mm -mm, it was not working. So I was like, you know what? That's okay. I prayed. I said, oh, I'm going to sit before the Father. I prayed and I said, thank you, God, for touching me. Thank you for giving me peace. You know, and I rested in the peace of God and I slept so good. And I said, okay, I'm going to get up early. And I'm going to make these shirts. So I get up early and I start prepping to get everything ready for the shirts and the last little bit of stuff that I couldn't get my mind together to do the day before when I had the help. So I'm doing all of that. And we got one hour until it's time for me to get to my destination to leave the house. And I said, OK, I'm not going to be able to get these shirts. OK, finally, I'll surrender, guys. I'll wear the black shirts. We'll wear the black shirts and I'm just going to be, I'm, I'm finally surrendering. It, it'll look like you want it to look. And so when I said that, he was like, finally. <laughs> so he, um, he started to minister my heart. And so he was telling me, okay, so this person is going to show up. This person is not, and this is going to happen. And this is not. So prepare here and prepare there. And he started giving me all these instructions. So I'm like, okay, so I'm writing stuff down and putting stuff here, putting stuff there. And I go around the, and then he said, go and get the, uh, go and get the box. It was a box that I needed for something that, um, to, that he had told me uh, an instruction that he had told me. So I said, okay, I turn around the corner. And guess what's sitting right next to the box? Some diva shirts that have my logo on them that are fancy, brand new, that I dismissed. Because three months ago, I was at my storage and he told me to grab those shirts. And I grabbed those shirts. Those shirts are sitting in my, in my office, sitting there. And they've been sitting there for three months. When did I get the call? 
three months ago. So where was my provision for my shirts? In my office three months ago. But what was I doing? <laughs> Trying to make it happen in my own might. So I was like, and this is the perfect amount of shirts. This is, this is the amount of shirts that I need. It's the sizes that I need. I earn the shirts and I go to the event. And on the way to the event, he said, I gave you the plan. I gave you the desire. Let me do it my way because my way is perfect. You went through all of that three months of hassle trying to make these shirts happen. And they were all ready in your possession. Y'all. I'm telling you, that right there just changed my perspective, like, because God is so good. And I, in my own might, can never do what he's already done. It's, he says it, he tells us in the Bible multiple times that with man, it's impossible. With God, all things are possible. So even in my disobedience, because he told me that he had a plan. And I, every step of the way, I altered that. And I made his plan fit to my demands. <laughs> fit to what I wanted it to be. And every time I caused myself more anguish, more pain, more anxiety, less time, you know, discontentment. All of those things, I was living in anxiety and all of this stuff because I didn't follow his plan. And as soon as I turned, like literally, I had like an hour. I turned, I said, okay, God, I'll wear the black shirts. I surrender. Bam. All that I needed for that event to go came right. Boom, 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 boom. He gave it to me. When I got there, everything ran smoothly. It was the most, it was one of the smoothest events that we've ever had. Um, in 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 and getting things together. Um, and at the end of the event, the opportunities that I was looking for, I got way more. Not only did the director come, but her boss and her boss all were like, we need this. What do you need? We gonna give you everything you need because we gonna support you. We want you in our, we want you here. So everything that I needed was provided for me. And even those things that I was thinking, he did way beyond what I thought because, like, it was it was it was phenomenal, y'all. <laughs> it was phenomenal. Um, and so I just say that to say that he his plan is perfect. And even in our disobedience, even in our stepping away, he will restore right back because nothing was lost. The event went off perfect. The people were there. The 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 people that I needed to influence to make to make a good uh, impression on, they were like, Whoo, mind blowing, you know. So God is good. I just I, I'm just really, really excited for what he is doing, because that that really changed my perspective of how I see what he wants from me. So what y'all got to say? Come on, ladies, I'm going to bring y'all on in and, uh, and, and invite y'all into this conversation. I ain't even been looking over here at these uh, notes. So <laughs> if anybody, I got into my conversation. That's okay. I've been manning the chat. That's thank okay. You, you. <laughs> <laughs> and so, yes, um, I have been manning the chat. Excuse my voice, guys. <clears throat> um, but your peeps out here, everybody's like in the eight-man corner with this, right? Um <clears throat> I love that Sister Kavina said, um, hashtag already. Come when on. you were talking about guys already giving the provision and she says, hashtag already. I thought that was so funny because I'm like, yeah, you got it. Um, and so um, Miss Ashton's just like, mm -mm -mm, my God, my God. <laughs> now, look, why am I adding my own little connotation? Because all I can do is read it. But I can imagine how they saying it. I can just imagine in my spirit what they mean. I'm just saying. <laughs> um, but yeah, we're just gonna round table this a little bit. Hey, Sister Laura, 
And we just want to say we welcome all of you um, to our live today. We appreciate you taking the time to come and visit us. Ashley Nicole, thanks. Sister Laura Kavina, um, Lili and Joy Lockhart. And then Miss Ashley and um, who did I see? I saw Mike Appling and Maya. And I saw Miss Crystal. Thanks for coming in. We are so glad to have you guys. <clears throat> I, Joy Jameson, I think I said her, but I don't want to miss anybody and Miss Christine. So it's so good to have you guys. You know how we love this interaction because uh, we can really kind of dialogue. So you guys just feel free to put whatever you like in the chat. Again, excuse my voice. Um, all thanks for the hearts, guys. We love it. Um, but just feel free to join in the conversation with the chat. Um, if you want to come online, just request it and I can bring you online as well. And so I love about this is um, one of the things that you were saying is, can you, <clears throat> about your perspective and how many times do we do things just because it's our perspective? It's the way we see it. And we refuse to see it any other way. We refuse to acknowledge that there is another way. We're like, did you hear what I said? This is the way that I'm about to go. And you're not going to tell me no. I, I'm not going to hear anything different. And especially if somebody comes up with something that's totally off the radar. I love that. You know, you call Takia for some help. And she's the one who's on the way over to help you physically anyway. But then she comes up with another idea. It's another perspective. It's another way to look at things. <coughs> Excuse me. And as she does that, she brings something else to the table. How many times does God come to you with another perspective, another way to look at it, another idea, another agenda? And because he's God, he knows it's the right way. He knows it's the right agenda. He knows it's the perfect thing to get you to the perfect place at the perfect time with the perfect items and doing the perfect thing with the right people. And how many times do we say, nope, that's not my idea. I want you to make my idea work. And so she says, right, well, why don't you just use black shirts because you have them. So use them. But because that wasn't the perspective, people of God, I want to encourage you today, and we're even going to pray that the eyes of your understanding would be enlightened and those yokes of false survival will be broken off of you. See, that was the problem in Joel. And that scripture, the problem was that they had these false gods that they perceived to be real. They had these false gods that they had chose to go along with unlike God. And what he said was, because you chose that way over my way, because you chose something that is obviously false, it's obviously not helping you. It's obviously causing you more harm than good. He said, I'm going to remove myself and I'm going to just let you go ahead because you're going to do what you want to do anyway, because that's what you're doing. So go ahead and knock yourself out. I'm going to be here when you're done. But I'm going to let you go that way. And so what happens is we open the door to caterpillars, to locusts, to the palmer worm. We open our hearts to something that's not real. We open our hearts to the devourer. And so he comes and starts devouring because that's what he does, right? He's doing his job. And so he's do 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 do. I could take that. I could take that. I, and you can't stop me. And why is that? Because you have decided that this way is the best way. And so we want to pray for the minds of the people in Jesus' name, because you will not be deceived. And some of you aren't deceived. Some of you are just stubborn. Now, stubbornness is as of idolatry. That's what the book of 2 Samuel says. So um, that is something that you have to choose not to do, right? It's a choice. 
But we can pray that the atmosphere would be so clear that you would see God in such a clear and a precise way that you would know 100% beyond the shadow of a doubt that this is what God is saying to you and that he is making your space clear to receive him. Hallelujah. Larry Cole, welcome. We're glad to have you on the live tonight. And so um, who wants to pray for me? I can pray. I'll pray. Amy's praying. Oh. Um, okay. <laughs> I was just, I want to give the kid a chance. Um, but since I have been delivered <laughs> from the spirit of stubbornness, <laughs> Um, I'm going to pray. And I, I'm just going to say this real quick before I pray. Um, that stubbornness, because God, he really dealt with my heart about it. Um, that was my, my self-preservation. So I felt like I had to, I had the responsibility of doing this right. And that's, that's my job to do. And so, um, I felt like I had to do that, that that was, that's on me to do. Um, and so he, he started to deal with my heart. Cause it's like, you got to trust me, baby. You got to trust me. You are not your own. You when, you when you said you believed in me, that means now you've been bought with a price and I'm yours. So I have the responsibility of caring for you. And so I had to learn to trust him because that's not easy, you know. <laughs> um, so um, I'm just going to pray for that. I, I'm going to pray. Um, Lord, I just thank you right now that our eyes will be open. Um, yeah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, that you would remove the scales from our eyes, God, that your light would shine up on us in those dark places and that we would grasp on to your light, that we would allow your truth to reveal in us the joints and marrow, um, the, the um intents of the heart that we may be able to accept your truth and denounce every lie that comes to us. Every lie that has has ingrained itself and, and nestled in and told us that it was a part of us. Your light is shining on that, Lord. And we thank you for revealing that to us, that we can renounce it. We can say, no, that is not me. That is not who I am. I choose to be who God has called me to be. So I thank you for your peace, Lord. Hallelujah. That we may accept your grace and your mercy that you have given up on us, that we will rest in who you are and rest in who you've called us to be, that we may see it your way and do it your way. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you, Father. <clears throat> Hallelujah. And I want to ask our audience this question is, can you trust God with your perspective? Can you trust God with your perspective? And if the answer is no, why not? Why not? Is it a past trauma? Is it because you've gone through this and you've been through this so many times that you're like, mm -mm, I'm not letting nobody handle this for me but me? Is it because that somebody said they're going to handle it for you? And so you're waiting because you don't want to do it. You don't want the responsibility. You're tired. You're like, I've always been the one who's had to handle things. I don't want to do it this time. I don't want to participate. Is it perhaps that you've just said, well, I think I am trusting him. But at every single turn, is, is there a blockage? At every single turn, is there a no? At every single turn, is something just hindering you? Then you need to go back and check that. Because the Bible says that the blessing of the Lord make it the rich. And he added no sorrow with it. And then he says that the way of a transgressor is hard. So if you find yourself in a situation and you're going to it over and over and over and it's hard. Stop. Check it. Now, sometimes it you, there's just opposition there because we live in this world. But sometimes that opposition has to do with you. She said for three months she was trying to get these shirts made, their shirts. That's not difficult. 
that's not a hard task. So if it took her three months to get the shirts done, something else was going on. So I encourage you to look at that. Can you trust God with your perspective? Takiya? Happy you brought that out. And I apologize that I am um, lagging. I know you can hear me, but my picture may be lagging. So I'm just gonna... But um, going back to the <laughs> mid tip talk, and I was like, okay, y'all gonna wear black shirts to you. And the way she went off, <laughs> but before that she had talked about how uh, we had already had a conversation about our motives but she just couldn't see it and sometimes because the motives are for the proper outcome we think that's okay and so therefore we really can't see what God's trying to bring out um, and so by simply making it a reality statement there's, they were going to have to wear black shirts then that's when shins came out. But I don't, Tammy really didn't even think right because her um, her motives, we had been talking about it, was for the proper outcome. And it seemed to be reasonable, right? But if God keeps coming back for something, then we know that there is more there. Um, so I think a lot of times we find ourselves in situations just because we're unaware of, the motive. We're un of our position. Um, we're just completely blind to that. Um, and so I think a lot of times, and Nisha just said, when that happens and we just keep getting hit with one thing after another and we're trying to accomplish a goal, just to have that wisdom and say, okay, God, what is it that you're trying to come come after and be 100% in that moment? Um, and however God chooses, because sometimes it's a process, right? So for Tammy, it was like, okay, y'all gonna wear black shirts. And then it was the outcome and, you know, she was able to go from there. So sometimes there's a process that God has to take us through. So be open to that process. Just don't don't have your guard up and say, okay, I know I'm right. And this needs to go down this way and whatever it is. If there keeps being a, an opposition there, unless God tells you it's something you need to take authority over, and even in that, God, because the Bible says we submit to God, resist the devil, and then he will flee. So in either way, you have to come to God and submit. And according to once you submit, then he says, okay, resist. Or he says, okay, I'm dealing with this. So every move starts with our submitting to God. So don't be so scared. I think a lot of times we think that we're coming to meet a judgmental God and a God that's ready to come get us. Um, and so our guard is automatically up when we go to God. Um, we go and we pray and we just pray our thoughts, but we're not really just there and transparent and just sitting in the moment. Don't be scared of God. Like, there's no reason. He just wants to love you through the process, whatever it is. Um, so whatever experience you've had before with God, whatever stories you've heard from other people, just submit all of that to God and be like, okay. I'm here. I was talking to God this morning about some things and I was like, this is where I am. I'm right here and I need you to come meet me. And as I did that, then God started showing some things. I had to call Tammy this morning. Um, he started dealing with my heart on some things. Um, and it was just some things I needed to see and acknowledge, um, um, seeing the devil, seeing all this other stuff. But it starts with that, that um, just being submitted to God. So I think that we have to because it's easy to put on a face. And that's what I was doing. I was dealing with pressures and I was like, okay, I'm going to keep on going. I'm going to keep on going. But if you don't know anything else about me, you know that I'm going to submit. And if what's, my statement is, what's it all for? So if it's not producing the fruit that I'll be producing, what's this for? I'm a, I'll make a hard stop. What's this for? So if you're not getting that, to God and be like, okay, what's it for? What, what? Come on, you're here to love me through this process. You're here to take me through this process. What's it for? And allow him to show you that. Um, so I think a lot of times if we just start there and understand that we're coming to a loving God and to a God that just wants to love us and show him to us, right, and just be intimate mm -hmm. with us, if we just start there, everything else will be easier. So even for that, I just pray um, for our hearts, to be that God just melts our hearts towards him. Whatever situation we had that 
you experienced before that God ministers to you in love and that even as he's drawing you because the Bible says with my heart I draw you with my love I draw you so he's constantly drawing us with this love but he also gave us a choice to receive right but before you life and death so God always gives us a choice so we have to receive the love and say okay God show me how to do this because I don't know how I, I don't know how to do it and allow him to walk you through that allow him to love you through that and then understand there's not a method we love methods got a method we know we we gain right but there's no method so just because it worked a certain way for someone else or just because someone else's relationship with god looks a certain way doesn't mean that yours is going to look that way right doesn't mean that god's going to work that same way for you to bring out whatever it is he's trying to um, bring about so just really take that time and just say okay god i'm here deal with me here and allow him to reveal whatever needs to be revealed that's it thank you jesus Thank you, Jesus. And so, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry, guys. <clears throat> and so um, she touched on something that I wanted to go back to um, earlier to, somebody said, um, about surrendering. Oh, it was Tammy. She was talking about that process of surrendering. And first thing I wanna say is, Takiya talked about the motives. So how do you find your motives? I put it in the chat because I didn't want to forget. Uh, but how do you find out what your motive is, right? A lot of times we already know what, it, our, what we're motivated by. We assume we know. That's why we're doing whatever we're doing. It makes sense to us. But if, if you are hitting opposition over and over, and you shouldn't be because they're just shirts, or if you're in a situation and you're, you know, you're standing, you're believing, you you walking in faith, you you know, doing all your little exercises and it's still not working. You need to check it. And so how do you check that? How do you find your motive? Ask yourself why. So the question is in this scenario, I have to have these shirts and I have to have a maid like this. The question was why? And then after that question's answered, you ask yourself again, why? And after that question's answered, you ask yourself again, why? We call it the five whys, the five whys. So you ask yourself why at least five times and be open, be honest. But your heart start opening up to that right answer. Your heart going to get there. Right. Now, your brain might want to change the answer because it doesn't sound spiritual. Remember last week I talked about I had to get to a place and I told God I don't like my life. As a matter of fact, I hate my life. That was a process of asking some why questions. Well, why is this and why that and why that? And finally I got to, because this sucks. <laughs> and then this is why it sucks to me. It is so funny. I love God. I, I think he's so personal. In Isaiah 41, and y'all know I've been stuck in Isaiah 40 one through chapters 45 but in isaiah 41 he says this to the people of god i love the message translation in this particular instance it says quiet down you uh ocean islands he says listen he's talking about the people y'all the ocean islands and busy clamoring and going back and forth and trying to figure stuff out he says sit down and rest everybody he said recover your strength gather all around me Say what's on your heart. And then together, let's discuss what's right. See, sometimes we think God doesn't care. We think I'm scared to go to him. Ooh, because he's going to pick a different answer than what I want to hear. How do you know? Because you won't even go and find out. Mm -hmm. Takiya said, don't be scared of God. But quite frankly, a lot of us are. Quite frankly, we're scared to put the truth on the table. Quite frankly, we pull back and we say, no, nah, because I'm not going to get what I want. Number one, you don't know what you're going to get because you didn't go and ask. And then number two, even if you don't get what you wanted, you're going to get his very, very best. And even if you can't see it as being the very, very best, you're still going to get the best. See, no matter what your life dishes out to you, 
Joseph's life dished out some rough stuff, right? He got sold to his brothers. Then he got locked up over a rape charge that he didn't commit. And then he was stuck in jail for an extra two years because he did somebody a favor and they didn't return the favor by telling it. And so all this time, he's in a rock and a hard place. He's in a bad space. For 17 years, the brother's in a bad straight. A bad straight. I mean, that's a nasty straight. In them times, prison wasn't no piece of cake. But all that being said, God was still with him the whole entire way. And do you know what? He became the second in command. The second in command, that means God didn't forget him. Now, I love this part. I'm going to read this part to you guys because some of you think that God has forgotten you. Some of you think that he doesn't care about your situation. Some of you are saying, well, if he cared, then he'd fix it. He said, no, this is how this goes. He said, but you, Israel, you're my servant. He said, you're my first choice. He said, I pulled you from all over every single place on the face of the earth. And I've called you out of every dark corner. And I'm telling you, you're mine. You're serving right next to me. He said, I picked you and I haven't dropped you. He said, don't panic. I'm with you. There's no need to fear because I'm your God. He said, hold steady and keep firm on your grip. Then he says this, count on it. Everyone who had it in for you will end up in the cold, real losers. Those who worked against you will end up empty handed, nothing to show for their lives. <laughs> when you go out looking for your old adversaries, you won't find them. Not a trace of your old enemies, not even a memory. Now, if that don't tell you that he's on your side. I don't know what will. He said, even those enemies who are opposing you, even those, those people who are coming against you, even those situations that are making a situation even worse for you. He said, I've not forgotten you. I'm right here. You're right by my side. He said, and better yet, he said, those people, they're going to come out real losers. When the time comes, judgment's going to come to them. He said, and I will recompense judgment way better than you could ever do it. He says, so trust me. It was said earlier, God already has your provision made for you. We are encouraging you with every single thing that we got. Be encouraged to receive God. You say, well, I already have God. Okay. Receive what he is saying to you. Because many of you, he is saying, sit down, be still. Let's talk about it. And you keep going the opposite direction because you don't want to talk about it. You say, uh-uh, because you're going to say something I want to hear. So I'm going to go over there. And he's saying, come, let's reason together. I love you. I want to tell you why my answer is my answer. And you're so paranoid. Some of you are just like freaking out. Like, <laughs> excuse me. You're literally freaking out. Kicking and screaming. Why do you want to wait to the last minute? Kicking and screaming. When you could have just got the church three months ago. Yeah, God is doing a new thing in you. He's saying, and will you not know it? He says, it will spring forth speedily. You know the new thing he's doing in you? He's changing the way you think. He's changing your heart's desires. He is moving upon you. Some ideas cross your mind. And some of you, what you think happened is you say, oh, it comes across. And then you go, mm. you hear it real quick. And then you go, mm -mm. well, I can't do that because and you start naming all this stuff. And one thing after another, after another. And the next thing you know, it's out the door. It left you. And God is giving you the answer. Hey, Tatiana, we're glad to have you. God is giving you the answer. But as soon as he does, you reason it. You go, yeah, nah, well, that ain't going to work. Cause, well, if I do that, then 
-hmm. And what happens is it goes and it keeps on going. And then you go back to your prayer closet and you pray real, real hard. And you're on, and you begging and you, you know, I see you guys just like, <laughs> and he's saying, but I, I just sent you the answer. I, I, it, it, it just, what, it, it was FedEx. You, you didn't get it. Okay. I'll send it again. And he does because he loves you and he wants yep. you to have the right answer. See, God is there for you. He's giving you these answers. Mm -hmm. And then you say, oh, no. And you start reasoning. And then it goes, shoot. Oh, let's break that in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Agree with God. Agree with God. Set your heart to say, God, I choose you. God, I choose you. Even if I don't know the answer, I choose you. Even if this is more difficult than I had anticipated, I choose you. Even if I don't like what you're about to say, I still choose you. This is what I tell God. God, I'm going to obey. I'm going to choose you. I'm just having a hard time right now. So if I fall out on the floor, if I kick, if I scream, just don't pay that part. No mind, Jesus. You just look over that part. Now, I'm going to get done with that at some point. Remember me, oh Lord. Because the truth is, I want to be whole. I want to be set free. And that's what you guys want. You want to be made whole. You want to be set free. You want to be loosed from your bonds in the name of Jesus. And he said, I have loosed you from your bonds. I have loosed you from every crooked and wayward place. She said, choose you this day whom you will serve. He said, I have called people to help you. I've called my word to assist you. I've sent my word to heal you. And some of you refuse. Some of you flat out tell me no. I encourage you to turn your heart even now in Jesus' name. Turn your heart back to God. Turn your heart back to a yes in the name of Jesus. Because he is there and he is saying, I am with you. You are right by my side. I have you. I have not left you. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Lo, I will be with you even to the ends of the earth. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. I just pray for the brain even in Jesus' name. We come against trauma in Jesus' name and the patterns that are formed in the brain due to trauma. In the name of Jesus, we speak to you and we command life to come back into you. We command strength to come back into you. We command wisdom to come back to you. We command you to be restored in the spirit of your mind and in your brain in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I just want to talk real quick about the, the way God works, right? I shared this before on here, but I'm going to share it um, in summary again. So I worked for the IRS, right, for over 12 years. And God had told me it was time for me to leave. Didn't do it. So he allowed me to lose my job. Then he restored so I got all my back pay, all that, great. But I didn't want to go back there because I knew my time was over. And so during that time, God was saying, be still. And I was like, okay. But I went and got another job. Because to me, being still meant, okay, I'm going to just spend some time with you. I'm still in this moment. I couldn't comprehend really what he was saying. And no matter which way I turned, I was getting the word, be still. 
God in our time, he may be still. And I was like, still, right? Um, again, but I went and got another job. And so he just kept coming, be still, be still, be still. And I was like, God, what are you saying? Because I know you're not saying it don't work. And a whole family, and a whole house, and a whole car note, and all these other bills I have. So I know that's not what you're saying. So help me understand what you mean by be still. And he just kept on saying, be still, be still, be still. And so I was under contract with this company that I was working for, a two-year contract for the state. And one of my appointments had canceled, had got canceled, and I pulled in this parking lot. And I was like, okay, God, it's in you. So if you were saying still meaning unto me not working, you know that I didn't understand that because that don't make sense to me, first of all. But I submit to you. So if that's what you're saying, you also know that I'm in a two-year contract and I can't just away. So if it's your plan for my life not to work, you have to find a way to get me out of this contract because I can't get it out myself. I'm bonded, right? I had this conversation with him in the parking lot. One week later, how many? Six, one week later, we get a nice little email that says that the company has lost its contract. Find this, right? Company has lost its contract effective immediately, and it gave 30 days, right? So effective immediately, company's lost its contract. Last pay will be 30 days from today. Like, what in the world? So I did some investigation on that. What happened? And some paperwork was submitted one minute late. One. One minute late. Cutoff time was 12 o'clock. Our The company's paperwork stamp was 12.01. And because of that one minute, they lost their contract. And I was like, okay, Jesus, I asked you to get me out. Of the company. Not lose everybody else's job. And so I was like, okay, God, you know what needs to happen within this company. I started praying about everything. Um, and asking him to to give, and I had a very specific list for each person. Do you know, by the time it was all said and done, God had did everything on my list for each person. So no one lost. No one lost. Everyone went to better places. One went able was able, because the owner was here, but his wife was in Texas, so he was able to go back and join his wife. Like, everything, full circle, 100%. No one lost. Everyone was stress-free. Like, we still love them to this day. Great. But I say all this to say that in my reasoning, I didn't understand what God was saying, be still, meaning don't work. Because we're not taught that. We're not taught to not work. We're not taught to um, that God's going to tell you to quit your job, all this other stuff. That's just not what's within our reasoning, right? But for me, that's what God was saying. And then I also asked God to make it right within my husband for my husband, right? Because I am married, so I have to submit to my husband. And so my husband was fine. Since that day that I said, okay, God, get me out. Do you know <laughs> what we've done financially and all that? We wouldn't have been able to do if I was working, period. The way God has moved and the doors he's opened, the ministry trips that's been taken, all this. And not even just that, what we needed for our our home, inside of our own home, it was imperative that I was still at home because the things that started to happen, I needed to be at home, all right? So God always knows what's coming and he always knows what he has planned. So even if what he is saying is beyond our reasoning, beyond what we know to be right, submit. Because we never lose and we will not be ashamed. We always has what's best for us. So in, in as we're now um, sitting with God and we're spending time with God, I was talking about he sends the word and it goes by and he sends the word and it goes by. Just say, okay, God, I'm here. I won't reason away what you're saying. Challenge you, because that's a challenge. I've been working for a long time, made very good money. And you tell me, to be home but we've not lacked at all we've not wanted for anything and matter of fact we've had abundance way more than my paycheck could have ever brought in do you understand way more so god is doing it 
what's been restored within my family, I'll be here all day. We'll be here all day. But I'm saying that to say, whenever whatever answer God gives you, don't reason it away. And I know Nietzsche had already said that, but sometimes we don't think that we're doing that because it's unrealistic not to work. That's what we're taught. Taught that you want it, a man don't work. Or it's, it's unrealistic not to have them shirts. It, it, unrealistic not to have them shirts. Right? I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I mean, it just makes sense to have shirts that match when you're doing a big event, right? Right. Makes sense. So don't reason it away. Just with God. And even Nietzsche said, you know, God, I'm going to submit. I may be kicking. I may scream. Don't worry about that. No, I'm coming to you. <laughs> don't, don't pay me no attention. But just go ahead and submit and don't reason it and even in his answer um whatever it is that you're trying to reason for me again don't work stay home it's like okay god i don't know how to compute that so make it right with my husband make it right with this make it right within me right because that's really really big to lose the appearance of losing an income in a home which we never lost but even, <laughs> even through COVID, we lose nothing but just not having the reasoning so just, again, be real transparent with God and say, okay, God, help me here. He already knows where you are. There's no reason to wear a mask and to do all this. To, you know where I am. Come on, let's talk about this. Because this isn't making sense. Come, let's reason together. That's what it is, right? So go talk to him and understand that come, let's reason together. Don't mean you got to convince God of your plan. It just means that he's got to work on you and your perspective. <laughs> But he cares about your heart. So he wants you to know that he cares. He's going to deal with it, deal with you all in love, but it's still going to be his way. Our thing now is you, either you're going to obey or you're going to obey. Either God's going to get his way, no one's going to come to pass. So you're going to either obey with a smile and be excited about it, right? Are you going to obey things? For what? I choose to smile, right? God's doing this. Go ahead and smile and go and enjoy the process. I know I'm about enjoying the process. Enjoy the process. God's so easy. He is. And I just want us to, again, understand the um, love of God that he has for us and just to openly receive him and just be light. All that pressure, that's not of God. Headaches and stress, and that's not God. That's not him. That's not his life for us. That's not the way he loves us. So if you're experiencing that, just be like, okay, God, show me your love. Show me you and help me not to reason it away. We make things so difficult. We, um, I'm about to say Aunt Renee because that's what she is to me. She is my auntie. So <laughs> she was talking to me and Tammy about some things. And she was like, y'all make it so difficult. It's not that big. Come on, bring it back down. And we was like, uh... <laughs> And it took us a minute because we couldn't even understand breaking back down. It's not that big. We was like, well, it's out here and it's this emotion and it's all this. And so she was like, no, come on, break it back down. Like, just deal with whatever it is and just allow God to love you there. Like, there's so much enjoyment. There's so much fun. There's so much freedom. Even in those times where you're trying to figure it out, right? He's still there. God, he just has a sense of humor. So get to know him. Just don't be your BFF. You'll enjoy it. We appreciate you. <laughs> we appreciate you all tonight. You all have been fabulous, Tammy. Did you want to wrap us up and close us out? I uh, sure will. And uh, pray for our um, audience tonight. Yes. Because we want you to walk in consistent victory. We want victory every week. Every week, we want, if you're here, we want whatever is said to pierce your heart. We want it to motivate you. We want it to encourage you and inspire you. But most, most importantly, we want God to penetrate by his love, the deep recesses of your heart, that you would be changed from level to level and glory to glory. 
that you would say yes, that your heart would be open for a new reason, for a new way, for a new idea. And you'd say, you know, God, this time I'm going to step out there a little further than I did last week. This time I'm going to say that other prayer that they told me to say. And, you know, I, I'm going to try this. I'm, I'm going to accept the challenge. Whatever's being put out there, I'm going to do it this time. And so that's what we're, we're inspired and encouraged to do as we meet you here. Um, but we're going to let her just kind of close this out because, you know, this has been her mom. Bless her heart and all her other parts. This has just been her mom. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, that it definitely has been my mom. And, I, and, and see, that's why he asked your prayers because I said, let me be a vessel. Let people see, let you all of me. And he's been using me real good on this this whole month so <laughs> but um we challenged you guys in our last one to take one thing before god um and so we want to hear your testimonies on that we want to hear your progress on that um go ahead and put those things in the chat or you can send them to btb host um what was that one what happened from that one thing that you brought before god um we double dog dare you and everything <laughs> So we want to know um, what what was what was the fruit from that. Um, but recapping today, God is giving he's answering our prayers. He's giving us things to do. Um, and what is our how is our perception changing the outcome of what he's planned? How are we reasoning that out? How are we um, uh, taking that into our own thought process to make it come to pass? What canker worm, palmer worm, locust are you creating um, in your life unnecessarily so um, because of your own perception? So we want to take those things before God. We want to use our five whys. Ask that question, why, 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 until you get down to the root of the matter. Um, and if you need seven, sometimes you need seven because you, you know, take a little bit more because you got you be around the mulberry bush. You don't want to re really be truthful about it all. <laughs> so however many whys it takes. Do your wise um, so that we can see victory because we want to see victory. It's all about the fruit. We talked about being, you know, having a fruitless tree and we don't want that. We want fruit. So I'm just going to pray us out. I thank you all for coming. Um, remember to um, send out your emails to uh, BTB hosts. And let us know how God is um, is is talking to you and and showing you his his mind. I thank you, Lord, for everybody that is here today. I thank you for um, the word that has gone forth um, that it be enlightenment. Hallelujah! And I just ask you to keep bringing it forth before them, everybody here, that you will bring it forth before us so that it would be. Um, it, it would bring forth fruit, that it would become our truth, that that light would shine on our darkness and we would hold on to that light. This information that we have gotten today, this word, this truth, this life, um, we have been able to, um, I ask you to help us to apply it so that we may see you. And I just come against every hindrance, every delusion or deception that says that this is this is not good that this is not true that this will not work for you i come against that right now and i um and you are released to choose you are released to choose god's truth and his love and his uh, peace and his wisdom are there to capture you and help you to bring this into fruition in your life so i thank you lord for your time for coming and being with us in your enlightenment and i ask you to be with us as we go throughout our week in jesus name i pray amen we will see you guys later next Monday. Woo, woo, woo. We love you.